Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah, one second. Hello. Hey, how are you doing? Um, let me put my headphones in real quick and turn off the L word. <laughs> Not a problem. I've been on a binging shed session. I fucking watched this like twice already. And I was like, oh, I gotta do it a third time. I'm gonna be honest, I've never seen that show. You know, it has its pros and cons. All right, can you hear me now? You sound good. Okay, cool, cool, I can hear you too, sweet. I love the pride flag in the back. Thank you, it's like my only decoration in my house. It's, it's so gay to be like, just decorating with gay shit, like. <laughs> it's like, what else am I gonna put up? Like, everyone needs to know. True, very, very true, that's so funny. Um, my friend Elise is like the same way. She has like her diploma. I mean, she's been out for a couple of years. She has her diploma and then she has a, a like a big gay flag and and she's like, this is my decoration. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly me. That's exactly it's me. It's a gay trope for sure. Um, but that's awesome. Thank you so much for being on. I'm so psyched to have you. Yeah, no, thank you for inviting me. I'm definitely excited. Yeah, I've seen your videos. I've been following you for a while um, and I've seen your videos and I was like, I have to get her on. Uh, uh, that's so. like embarrassing a little bit but why is it embarrassing i think i used to make like really shitty content a while ago i guess i never i don't know when i started following you when did you start making content i started making content um probably like a year and a month ago so okay oh you yeah you've been on it for longer than me i got on it in like april oh um, so was it like a quarantine thing oh yeah it was a big quarantine thing I uh, <laughs> I had hooked up with this uh, girl who was younger and it was like February and she was like, had like 35K or something. And like, she like showed it to me, like when we were out, you know, before like pre COVID days, we were like out at, mm -hmm. a, at a cabaret or whatever. And I was like, the fuck is this? Like, this is TikTok, like what the hell? Cause like I'm 26 and I'm like considered a millennial. And I was like, okay, like in my head, I was like, is this supposed to impress me? Like, I already think you're hot. Like you're cool. Like, it, you know, it was funny. And she was like, oh, I have to respond to my followers. Like in the, the morning, like after she was like, yeah, I have to like, I want to make sure that I like give positivity and hope and all this stuff. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, who is this? Um, and obviously, like, we just, you know, it was just, it wasn't anything. But, like, I ended up getting on it in April, and here we are. It's like, so, yeah, it's like, when I first, like, heard about TikTok, I stuck to just, like, watching, like, YouTube compilations of, like, the funniest stuff or whatever. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to get the app. And then eventually, it's like, I got the app. It's like, okay, but I'm not going to make an account. Yeah. And I'm an account that I posted, and it just yeah. kept going like that. It really was a snowball and also out of boredom and create like I had so much creative energy I needed to do something and I was like okay like let me check this out like this will be fun like I'll post some random videos we'll see what happens like one video randomly got like 3,000 views and I thought that was so much I was like oh my god 3,000 views like I'm gonna try this for real um <laughs> and then I was like ooh like I'll just start posting like gay shit. Let's see what, what goes on in the community. Cause I wanted like to have more queer friends. And so I was like, okay, like, let me post some stuff. Like, and also just to see like, are people like understanding, like, are people like, are other people out there like having the same problems that I'm having or the same experiences. And it just kind of like snowballed from there. And then I was like, I'll make a podcast um, just to talk to other queer people yeah honestly so, it's such a it's such a cool idea you know yeah it is super cool it's a lot of fun and my friend edited edits it um you've probably seen her she's that gay bitch from ohio her name's elise pinter i follow her i'm pretty yeah. sure yeah she's yeah. got like those like handkerchief headbands yep <laughs> yep that's her um but yeah she edits. so it's like a full queer just a, all collaboration thing you know like my friends were like we're in we'll help you out and i was like this is awesome this is all i ever wanted that's so cool um, but yeah, super excited to have you on. Um, I'll do a little intro for you. But like I said, like, you know, it's just kind of us chilling, talking, like just some topics based on your content. Your content's fucking hilarious. Um, I always think it's so fucking funny. Um, and I also think it's really funny 
like when um oh we'll talk about it later but like there's just one video um that I thought was funny like when you the hot girl shit video because like I think a lot of like cis people like would just think that you're tucking in your shirt which is like so funny because you get to like skip all of like the people who might be like oh my god like or do something <laughs> transphobic so it's like it's a great joke for the queer community and it's also a great joke for like co like people who might not you know be comfortable with like it's oh it was so great I was like this is fucking hilarious <laughs> um I don't know if you meant to do that but like when I saw that I was like that's fucking genius regardless <laughs> You know, honestly, I don't think I have like any like too much thought into any of the videos I post, but yeah, I thought it was funny. I was like, that's that's <laughs> fucking awesome. Um, I appreciate that. Yeah, no problem. Um, okay, let me go ahead and pull my stuff up here. Little script, scripty script. Okay, cool. And then you are from Chicago, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. That's what I thought. Um, and then I usually do like a little intro of like, um, like just like a little bio, you know, and so like I have some stuff on here, like TikTok, like Tri Town. Um, are you like a Midwest baby? Like, did you grow up in the Midwest? Yeah, I grew up in Wisconsin. So, oh, nice. Okay, your cheese head. Sweet. Exactly. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, Where are I, you located? I'm in You're Cincinnati. In Cincinnati, okay. So I'm Midwest too. <clears throat> Without the the Wisconsin, Wisconsin accent. <laughs> oh, like I for sure still say like bag and stuff. So. <laughs> Grab the bags. <laughs> exactly. That's how I talk. That's how it's supposed to be. <laughs> I love that. There's this comedian that I follow. Um, I forget his name, but I think he's from Wisconsin and he's absolutely hilarious. Is that the guy that does like the the Manitowoc Minute? Yes, stuff? Manitowoc Minute. Yes. That's literally my hometown. No way, Manitowoc yeah, is like, your hometown. That's my hometown. Like that's where I grew up and that's went awesome. to co uh, not college, high school and stuff. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, that guy's one of my favorites. I saw his IKEA video, um, and then I just like binged all of his stuff after that. <clears throat> it's it's but. so good for like a Midwestern type sense of humor it really is and it it's for like pretty much all the midwest like even though it's like he does a lot of stuff that's like niche for like what i would think niche for wisconsin i think it a lot of that stuff like just like the hospitality and the asking how your family is and can i bring over a casserole like i swear to god like like that's like my family <laughs> <laughs> how's your mom doing i heard she's in the hospital well i hope she gets better you know like <laughs> i We're hope you have a safe over. flight on your vacation <laughs> That's like watch out for deer. Like that's always uh, a <laughs> seriously. Oh, I've hit a deer. My sisters hit a deer. My dad hit a deer, dead deer on the side of the road in my own car. So that was fun. Oh um, no, I've I've been lucky. I haven't hit any. So that's nice. That's awesome. You're one of the lucky ones. <laughs> I, what can I say? Uh, it's like you've never hit a dead deer that was already dead. It was just in the road, and you happened to hit it. That's crazy. Um, was it like freshly dead do you know like i don't know it was it was so weird my dad was driving me to like the greyhound bus station because i was taking the bus to meet some friends to then drive to a music festival in college and i don't know why he was driving and i wasn't but like he it was literally i was like dad and then he hit it and he just bumped it and we were on the highway so the deer must have like gotten on the highway got hit and so my car was out for a fucking month. So I came back and I still had like three weeks left without my car because my dad fucked up. Jeez. Yeah, but you know, it is what it is. It was in his name anyway. So I was like, oh, well, you know, if you want to make the car payments for the next uh, month, that would be great. <laughs> make it up to you. Yeah, seriously. Um, but okay, cool. So I, awesome. And then um, I usually put like someone's job here or like what yeah. they're aspiring to be too? Sure, uh, so yeah, so I'm, a, I'm an engineer is what I do. Oh, sweet. Like, are you like civil engineering, mechanical? Like I do bio? Uh, industrial for like quality engineering. Industrial engineering, oh, that's cool. My cousin is um, a mechanical engineer. He graduated and he's like at his first job now and he loves it. <laughs> oh, I hated I hated mechanical too much math 
Ah, yeah, I'm not a math person either. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, engineering's nuts. I had a couple of friends like who thought they were into it and then just couldn't couldn't do it. Like they were housed in the, you know, because they typically have those programs and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. sometimes it just isn't for certain people, even though they like can like intellectually do the work. So it's like, I think it's like one of those niche fields, kind of like, uh, like nursing or like being a doctor, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, t I totally, know. like I've seen so many of like my friends, like switch majors and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't imagine. I, I majored in psychology, so I have no idea what it is. <laughs> oh. um, okay, cool. Um, <clears throat> cool, shoot. TikTok, industrial engineer. Okay, cool. Awesome. Okay, cool. And then some topics that I thought would be fun. Um, is like about talking about like queer culture in Chicago because like you guys have like some pretty awesome stuff and I haven't really talked about a, like I, I like to talk about queer culture in certain cities because we have a lot of listeners that are from like different areas mm -hmm. and I like getting everyone's experience regardless of like how how long you've been in the queer community and, and on all of that stuff um but I think that like would be super fun to talk about um and then like just talking about like uh, your coming out journey and, and all of that stuff. We have a lot of listeners and I've um, compiled a lot of listeners who have felt like had to come out twice, whether that's because they're trans or because they're non-binary, but like having to come out with their sexual orientation and also having to come out with their gender representation. And so I think it would be fun to touch on that if you're comfortable with that. Um, I think that that would be super awesome. Um, but then again, it's it's up to your discretion. But I yeah, always get those. Okay, cool. I always get those and I'm like, man, I've only come out once. <laughs> so like, I can't really speak on it. Um, but like, if I always say, if I ever have someone on, like, you know, I'll let you know kind of thing. Um, mm -hmm. And so like, I've had quite a few um, different people on, but yeah. So I thought that would be awesome. Um, cause I feel like a lot of people don't talk about that, um, a lot and yeah. And, uh, and just some of, some of your videos, like I thought were really funny, like the estrogen video that you made, I thought was really funny. Um, which one was it the, like the shot one? No, it was, well, I also want to talk about that one because I want to talk about like, um, suppression on TikTok of people of color and, and other, and other minorities and people in LGBTQ plus specifically trans people. Mm -hmm. Um, I thought that was really good to talk about and, and, and get, you know, a little political if you're comfortable with that. Um, because like I've had stuff that's been banned too, that hasn't been even remotely like sexual in nature and things like that. And, um. But like, yeah, and I, I know a lot of queer people have and like, yeah, I think that shit's ridiculous when I saw that video of you, of them getting it taken down for you, you know, like um, doing your hormone replacement therapy and like literally there's like, I've, I've seen, like I follow some of those accounts that literally follow like mobs and like how to like make Coke and, and shit like that. And like <laughs> other, other very violent things. And the fact that like, they were like, oh, well, it's maybe it's not harassment, but it's violence <laughs> is exactly. absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I thought that would be neat. And then also just like the funny one that you made when you're like, damn, I've been banned from Dave and Buster's. I thought that was really funny. Um, <laughs> uh, Cause it's like the whole thing, like the whole like, oh, like lesbians are gonna be strong. Like, let me open this jar for you. And you're like, ah, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, definitely. I thought it was so funny. Um, but yeah, so those are kind of the topics. If you have anything else you wanna talk about, um, we can also talk about the stuff that's happened just recently with what's been going on in the Capitol and things like that too. If you have stuff to talk about that with. The whole takeover cool. of the country. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, like the memes are plenty. There's just so much content. I literally am now scrolling through everything on TikTok. I feel bad, but I'm like, I need to get to the, the first person news. I need to get mm -hmm. to the commentary on what's going on. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of what, kind of the rundown, if you're cool with it. So. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm up with for whatever, so. Awesome, okay, cool, cool. So I will go ahead and do like a little intro and then we'll kind of, we'll kind of get into stuff. Okay, awesome. 
Welcome to Queer Talk, the number one podcast to connect you to all of your favorite queer creators in a space where we share our stories on all things queer related. And hey, if you're new listening to this, give us a follow on Spotify, subscribe on Apple Podcasts, and we are now streaming full video episodes on YouTube. So you can watch these episodes on your TV, phone, tablet, wherever you're tuning in. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. Um, link is to watch is in the uh, description, blah, 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 description. Uh, today, our guest is a TikToker. She's an industrial engineer. Uh, she is from Chai Town, a Midwest baby. You can find her at Samantha.Lutz on TikTok. Please welcome Samantha Lutz. Hi, thank you for having me. You are welcome. Um, I forgot to ask you this before we got started, but do you do you go by your full name, Samantha, or do you go by Sam? I saw some like Sam stuff, so I didn't know. Yeah, you know, it's actually like a, I'm in like a unique situation because I got a, I got to pick the name that yeah. I wanted to go with, right? And so, you know, I'm pretty comfortable with either, but Sam's pretty easy, so go ahead with that. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah, I wanted to ask, and I was thinking about this as I was having you on, because like, it, a lot of people when they have names like Samantha or Jonathan, like, it's so easy to just say, hey, John, or, or hey, Sam, or like, like, hey if it's elizabeth like hey liz or hey beth or something like that because it's so common to have that and but like for people who choose their name right like you put a lot of thought into the name you you wanted that name like so like i i always like when i was thinking i was like maybe i should be like i never thought about it but like i would think like some like trans people would be like more sensitive like no like it's Samantha. Like I, I like I, <laughs> I named myself Samantha. It's Samantha. If I want to name myself, I want to name myself Sam. <laughs> um, which makes total sense, right? Because like there are people out there that are gonna misgender and 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 you know want to call you by your dead name and everything like that. And even though it's not like a a super slight, it's like motherfucker. Like I I, I said Samantha. Like <laughs> did you hear me say Sam? Um, <laughs> And I was thinking about that before I got on and I was like, I want to make sure that like, I don't just call her Sam and she's like, that's not Sam. Um, but yeah, that's, that was kind of what was going through my head before I got, what came on with you. Yeah, I know. You know, I think it's pretty common. I think, you know, some trans people tend to like pick names that are like, I guess like the gender opposite equivalent of okay. the like dead name, but I, I chose something completely fucking different and, mm -hmm. um, so like I'm totally comfortable. I don't like Sammy though. Like if you call me Sammy, it's like, oh, like am I five? Like, come on. Sammy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh yeah. I totally get that. I have like, I, I, I know like a couple Samantha's that go by Sammy, but a, a couple that go with Sam too. And it's so funny because it feels so fitting for like both of them, you know, <laughs> like I couldn't see one as Sam and one as Sammy. They, they just, it fits. Um, yeah, there's like a type of like Sam and a type of Sammy. Yeah, there's like a there's like a Sam and there's like a Sammy, you know, like <laughs> Sammys are like animated. They're like, they got a lot of energy. I don't know. That's just like my super personal bubbly, really. happy people. <laughs> You're like, it's not me. <laughs> like, oh, no, definitely not. <laughs> yeah, that makes uh, I get that. I get that. Um, but that's cool. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about like, so you're from Wisconsin. Um, were you from like a small town? Yeah, so I grew up in like a, a pretty small area um, on the on Lake Michigan and, you know, votes Republican all the time and Oof. surrounded by farms. So you can kind of like imagine like the kind of town I grew up in. Yeah, yeah. I also grew up in a small town, very Republican town with Republican uh, family. So I could totally get where you're coming from there. Um, like, what was it like coming into your um, gender representation and um, coming out <clears throat> um, as a lesbian in kind of that environment? Like, did you, did you start that journey then, or did you kind of start it when you moved to Chicago? So I actually, I guess, I, <clears throat> I guess I knew like, as I was like growing up, especially through like my teen years, so like 15, 16, that I was, you know, experiencing like different, I guess like gender identity issues than like regular cis people would, like people that don't question their gender. and. 
a lot of like what I had been taught or like what has been around me was just like, that's bad, repress, 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 and just like yeah. move on. So it wasn't really until I, I went away to college and I went to uh, college in Wisconsin as well, but like on the other side of the state in an even smaller, even more like rural town. So uh, the the pattern kind of continued, but it, a lot, it gave me the space to kind of think for myself and like process my own ideas and thoughts. And eventually, you know, I think by the way, by the time I was like 20, I finally came out. That's awesome. Um, that's super awesome. So um, so where did you um, go to college, like in Wisconsin? Is that what you said when you went to? <laughs> okay, okay, gotcha. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Yeah, I, I mean, it took me so long. I had to, I, I mean, I had to wait until I was out of college because I still like, like kind of like you, I went to, I didn't really leave, leave. Like I went to school in Kentucky, like right over the bridge. So somehow I got even more conservative, <laughs> <laughs> like going into college. I don't know. Um, but it did, it took, it took me out of getting, cause it was still like, uh, I went to a bigger school, but I was in the athletic community. So it was small. It was like a small, you know, fishbowl. And I just didn't feel comfortable being able to to come out with that kind of pressure and just everyone knowing and it just the thoughts of like people talking about me you know like I suddenly became having social anxiety and I was so insecure like what are they're gonna talk about me even if they talk like good things or neutral things they're still talking about me and I just want to blend in like I just want to like it to be nothing like I was so like devastated even though I realized that I couldn't control it like so many people were like, you can't control it. Why are you thinking about it? And I was like, well, because I can't control it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I totally get that. Just like the, uh, I, you know, I always think of it as like the way it's like, I don't want to be just defined at, by like, you know, one or two facets of like who I am. I was constantly like afraid of being like Sam, the trans girl. Like that's how people would know me as I was trans. Yeah, yeah. And so just be being like uh, afraid of that kind of just labeling for sure yeah exactly like I just like I I literally remember like I couldn't even tell like my extended family that I and and at the time I didn't even consider myself a lesbian like at the time I I mean I knew I wasn't bisexual but like I knew that my parents would understand queer because I literally came out as queer and they were like what <laughs> they're like what what's that um and they still think it's like a bad term like they won't <laughs> use it like they refuse to use the term because they still think it's bad. And I'm like, it's not. So now we're getting to a point where now it's like, <laughs> it's, uh, it's homophobic that you're still on that you can't use the word. Cause we, we, we've had so many years now, like, come mm -hmm. on, stay with it. Um, but yeah, I came out as queer and they're just like, what? So I was like, oh, it's I'm just like, it's bi. And so they, <laughs> They were like, well, your grandparents aren't going to understand what queer is because we don't get it. So we're just going to say that you're bisexual. And I was like, I don't give a fuck at this point. I'm exhausted. I've been coming out for a year now to everyone slowly. It's, it, I'm on my deathbed. Just fucking go. Just do it. Um, it's, this, it's the slowest <clears throat> mandate to honestly take off is coming out. Yeah, it really is. And well, some people, like I just had on um, Emma Stern. Mm -hmm. and and uh she and I were talking and she was like I figured it out and told everybody within a month <laughs> just like <laughs> she's on x games mode like holy shit um but I think that's awesome because she was able to do that like her that's her journey you know and then she you know had a journey of of her pronouns and like and so like some people are able to do that and she's able to document it like she's able to have the confidence to like document as it's happening which i could have never done that so it's nice for queer people to have that have people that are able to do that you know what i mean oh, yeah definitely and it's exciting to see like i guess uh just the, the level of acceptance that's like you see nowadays like i would not have survived high school if i came out in high school but now like i know like at my old high school there's like openly gay people and it's like you know it's like that's something I could have never imagined and already like the generation right before me or after me, I suppose. 
Yeah, Gen Zs have it nice. Um, so I don't even know if they know how nice they have it, but <laughs> they do. And I and it's not a place where I come of like jealousy or envy or anything like that. Like our journeys are our journeys. I want to be who I am without it. But it is like it's the same for me too. I came from a high school. Oh, I can't even. I don't even know how to say this. Um, if you heard about the the national news about the the boys at the high school football that were parading around with the flags, did you hear? Oh, mm-hmm. that, that was my school. Nice. That's so cool. <laughs> it's so cool. Um, <laughs> awful uh absolutely awful so yeah that's i mean we have there are kkk members that are in the district i mean it's that bad racially and and um and for for people in the lgbtq plus community so it was not a safe space and my best friend and i my best friend came out in in college as a lesbian we basically like grew up together and uh she knew for a long time I kind of started knowing a little bit later in my high school career, but like, yeah, I mean, it was just not a safe space. Like, and I, I remember seeing people who were out, I was like thinking, reflecting on this, like this week. And I saw people and I saw how they were treated. I saw the, the women that were coming out and most of them were coming out as like, bi. And I remember them being, you know, stamped as promiscuous and sleazy and slutty and whatever for that. And then I saw like the men that were coming out and, you know, it's all seen as less than and inferior. Right. And like, mm-hmm. I saw like them being seen as weak and, you know, pushed around and, and bullied and, and that kind of thing. And I was like, yeah, not for me. That's, you know, cause it's being like equal to like lower status. Cause you're being made to feel less than. And I was like, my dad's a coach. My mom is a teacher in the district that would ruin everyone. I would take down the whole family. <clears throat> bit dramatic, but that's how I felt. <laughs> oh, I live for the dramatics. My girlfriend always just comments on how dramatic I can be. So, <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's how I felt. I was like, the whole family's going to go down if I come out. Our reputation will be soiled. And now I just don't give a rat's ass. <clears throat> I know when I came out, that was such a big concern of mine was like, you know, it's all of a sudden it puts this burden on my parents to explain to like, uh, you know, family friends or whatever that like, I have a daughter now and suddenly it's like, but then I'm like, that's not my fucking problem. Like I got my yeah. own shit to deal with. I can tell people. Like yeah. it's not gonna... You're right. It's, it's their journey. It's not, <laughs> it's not like your burden. And it shouldn't be their burden either. And if it is, they need to figure their shit out. <laughs> For sure. And I think that comes with confidence. Like I was not confident when I came out. Like I was afraid, like I just was not afraid, but I was just so emotionally exhausted. I couldn't tell my extended family, nor did I want to. I didn't want to deal with that. You know, I thought I wanted to be the educator, but it turned out I just wanted to be me. I didn't want to have to be the educator. Why do I have to <laughs> be the one to educate? And I go back and forth with it sometimes, you know, sometimes I feel okay doing it. It depends on the angle and like what's being said. And sometimes I just don't, I just really don't. I know that that's, you know, it's neither, it's nobody's, no queer person's burden. They don't have to be the educator, but they can if they want. Mm -hmm. You kind of feel like the person, like whoever's like only point of reference and like that you speak for, for the whole like queer community or like the whole gender non-conforming community and that's like it can be shitty it feels like a lot to to have to deal with yeah (laughs) like I have to put all this shit on my shoulders like (laughs) up to us to figure it out um (laughs) but yeah I I'm trying to get gather my thoughts I had another thought and I forgot about it um dang today's today's been so crazy um my my place is freezing because the heat went out because the furnace is fucked up (laughs) so my landlord right literally like five minutes before I got on this call he comes down and he goes I have a space heater for you um he's like the warranty paid for it so here's a space heater and I couldn't put it in here because I didn't want it to like like have all the sound in the background so I'm like Mm -hmm. just kind of freezing my ass off while it's like my my room's getting toasty so I'm like okay (laughs) So after this, you're like crawling under your covers and just 
seriously. I thought about bringing my blanket and just like being like, hi. Um, There's no shame in that. (laughs) I might if I get cold enough. That's why I have tea. Gotcha. But, but yeah, that's, that stuff is crazy. Like, I think some people, if they don't come from a small town, like they don't, they don't get how like insidious it can be and how bad it can get. Um, I think a lot of my stuff was in my head. Like I was afraid of like the worst case scenario and I was catastrophizing, Um, but it does happen, you know? So it is a real threat, even though like, you know, me now, I probably wouldn't have jumped to like such monstrous, (laughs) monstrous conclusions, but you know, sometimes that happens. Especially with like small towns, you always, I guess, you know, you know, most people like the degrees of separation is so, short so like if you come out to like your circle all of a sudden the whole town seems to know and it's like Mm -hmm. it's just uh it's crazy yeah and as I'm saying this it's like so funny because I was so concerned about it at the time but then I got drunk and told like four different people at the local bar that I was gay and then I was like oh my like like my friends were trying to like stop me from doing it but I was like no (laughs) they need to know <laughs> and they were like you're gonna fucking regret it <clears throat> and you know and then I woke up hungover and I was like why did I do that it's it's coming true and my friends were like who fucking tried to stop you dude <laughs> <laughs> oh but <clears throat> yeah that stuff is that stuff is crazy um so Chicago so when did you decide to like move to Chicago was it for a job like how did you end up in Chi city Yeah, so, I mean, being, like, in Wisconsin, like, uh, my college town had, like, 10,000 people in it, so, like, I need a big change of pace, and so when I, when I ended up getting, like, graduating and getting a job, I got a job in Chicago, so I was, like, pretty thankful for that, and I moved about, I think, uh, like, almost two years ago, year and a half-ish, so I've uh, been here for a bit. Oh, I think you. Oh, did I cut out? You might have cut out. I was like, I was like waiting for you to hear, like say something, but uh, I think you cut out when you were saying how long you've been in Chicago for, maybe. Yeah, so I've been here for about you know just over a year and a half. Okay. So um, yeah, I feel like kind of gotten to know it, but like with COVID, you know, the whole past year has been wasted. So mm-hmm. my experiences have been a bit limited by that, unfortunately. Yeah. Oh yeah. Cause you, oh my gosh. So you had maybe like six months and Mm -hmm. then, and then the, the pandemic hit. Damn. But yeah, I definitely took like advantage of what I did before the pandemic hit. So like that was exciting. So like, did you go, are there any cool spots? I've been to like a couple cause I, I bet I was up there a couple of times, but I was up there during the pandemic. So like there wasn't really like much to do. Um, but like, what are the, like, good queer spots, like, at least their first six months there, like, what was your, what are your thoughts on the queer culture in Chicago? Yeah, so, uh, I guess most of my experience with, like, I guess, um, gay, like, places or, like, place, uh, areas is, uh, there's this area, um, kind of in like Lakeview, which is like a section of the city. It's called Boyce. It was called Boyce Town, but they recently switched it to something like, like the name of the street that it's on or something. Okay. There's just like a row of like a gay bars. I think they changed it to be a bit more inclusive, but I haven't been there since they changed it because of the pandemic. So I'm not exactly up to date on it, but um, they have... You know, for the most part, I think it's, uh, you know, that area is, like, pretty accepting. They do, like, what a lot of, like, big cities do, where they, like, paint the crosswalks with, like, the, the different LGBT flags, which is really cool. Um, That's awesome. A lot of the bars are, like, I guess, just, like, any gay people, but some are definitely, like, feel, like, more like it's just for men. I know of, yeah. like, one or two that are, like, lesbian bars. Ooh, do tell. There's this one called Diaz Tequila, and it's like a place that has like really like bomb ass Mexican food. 
uh, in the daytime and then it like changes to like a dance floor and like an open patio at night. Oh, fun. And that's uh, that's for the women, so. Hey, 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 ladies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I watched Baby Mama the other day. It's just stuck in my head now. <clears throat> <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, I went to Hamburger Mary's last time I was there because mm-hmm. they had an outdoor space. And so, and they do like cabaret, so they have drag, or they do drag shows, not cabaret. But, um, and so they had like the drag queens out doing the show, like, just out on the patio which was really cool they just had to wear their visors what time um, of year did you go was i was summer? yeah i was there in august and then i was there again in october gotcha okay but yeah so hamburger mary's was up but like a lot of the places like weren't really hopping um in boys town and i didn't really when i was there i didn't know like the specific like lesbian bars like you said like it's called boys town so like originally it was mm-hmm. for like gay men and so I definitely got that feeling because there was like a lot of gay men. I didn't see a lot of, you know, queer women, at least like presenting like, you know, super queer um, mm-hmm. or anything. But um, it's nice to know like there are a couple ones that are specifically queer. So if I, I have friends and family that live there. So if I ever come back, I'm going to be I'm gonna be going to those places. Yeah, I would definitely, you know, check out that DS tequila as well as there's like a place like right across the street called, called Sidetrack and it's more like a dance club oh, type fun. place. Okay. And uh, I don't I don't approach people because I'm like absolutely terrified of like that. <laughs> I wait till they approach me. But, yeah. you know, I've had you no know, like issues of meeting people when I was single. Oh, cool. <laughs> You're like, yeah, I had no issues. I like, call, I'm hot like, as what can fuck. I say? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. Um, <laughs> that's awesome. That's super, super awesome. Um, well, let me... I got to check our time here because Zoom was being weird the last time I had this and they were like, had me on a timer. But hmm. now I don't think I'm on one anymore. I don't know. That was some weird. I had to like <laughs> upload it in two separate ones. Um, but I think we're okay. I was like trying to check the time to make sure. Um, <laughs> but oh, and if you need to get up and like get a drink or go to the bathroom, it's edited. So oh, there's no problem. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, I forgot to tell you that, but okay, cool. Um, Cool. We'll talk about um, some of your videos. We'll talk about the um, the Estrin video that you got taken down. Yeah, sure. That's fun. Okay, cool. <clears throat> um, another video that I saw you post, um, you were talking about a video that you got taken down when you were um, doing some hormone replacement therapy. You were taking your estrogen. Um, tell me a little bit about that because I've seen a lot of like POC and um, people in the queer community get stuff taken down that's completely, that's not just in the realm of TikTok being like ridiculous because they just are in general, like, but this stuff is like discriminatory. So tell me a little bit about what happened to you. Yeah, for sure. So I guess like a quick explanation of the video is I, um, I just, I guess went through uh, my basic like my weekly hormone shot when I like shoot up with estrogen and uh I was just like doing like a a little video and of course like all of my videos aren't that serious and so like I just had some like sly captions like go with it using like the new text-to-speech thing I was just mostly like testing that out and um I posted the video and it was doing really well actually for like one of my videos within like 30 minutes I was at like 17k views and I'm like okay that's like you know, a quarter of my followers already, which is like exciting. Yeah. And then within the hour, it got taken down. And I had never had anything taken down before. So I was like, really like, I guess, kind of like confused because I made sure not to like show any blood. And I was like being like super careful yeah. with like yeah. all of that stuff. And, you know, the reason I was taken down. Uh, had to do with like illegal content and uh, something like uh, regulated goods, right? So like related to the realm of like illegal drugs, I guess is like what I was talking about. And I'm sitting there thinking like, this, how is this illegal? Like I've literally been on cartel TikTok 
and th that's doing just fine and it got taken down so i uh i thought maybe it's because the fish showed the label of my of my little vial of like estrogen or whatever and uploaded again like with that covered up and that was taken down as well and so after i appealed those i uh, got my not only did i get my appeal denied but they changed the reason from like the illegal goods to uh violence or uh violence or gore or something like that saying it was like it was like too graphic to be seen on tiktok oh my god that's absolutely ridiculous there's so much graphic shit on on tiktok they pick and choose mm -hmm. and like yeah. not even, and like so if you do like a simple search and like um in in the TikTok search, like if you do like hormone injections or like anything with needles, like there's so many videos of it that it's it, that basically mimics like what I, my video was. Yeah. That, uh, it's it's like a really shock that it got taken down. Yeah, it's medical. I mean, what if you were a diabetic mm -hmm. and you were taking your you know your uh, your insulin, mm -hmm. but they've but taken like it down. Yeah, as I was like, that was one of my arguments in the appeal. Like, this is the same as like people getting their COVID vaccines. Yeah. This is the same as people. People uh, need it. Like you need it. Like you need your estrogen. Like people need insulin who are insulin dependent. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, so. It's, it was really frustrating. And then what I did is I went ahead and uploaded a third video, but I literally, uh, blocked out you know every instance of the needle every instance of you know anything that could even be remotely considered and it was like a really tongue-in-cheek thing because i would cover it up with like text that's like definitely not a needle and stuff like that yeah to kind of to see if i guess just to see if my my theory that it's like taken down just because it's like trans content mm -hmm. is true because you know there's nothing visible in the whole entire video and it ended up being taken down again with that one too were you using like um trans hashtags no i don't i don't use hash hashtags actually so i was kind of surprised by that too oh cool well good for you that's awesome that you don't use hashtags i'm always afraid not to use them um because whenever i tried i was like oh <laughs> let me try these these people look so fucking cool like when they don't use them and then my shit never goes anywhere so i'm like oh I have like this weird back and forth like with myself <laughs> mentally that's like oh my like if I post a video I'm like oh my god I hope it does well but then at the same time it's like I don't care about this like I post like twice a week tops yeah. so it's like not worth like worrying about it and I really just try to have fun with it I get that I get that but I think it's more um insidious that it you didn't even allude to like you know, you don't have trans hashtags. So like how the fuck, like, you know what I mean? Like the, someone <laughs> like had to look at that and be like, oh, that's, kids can't be seeing that, <laughs> you know? I guess like what my guess is, so there's, there's this um, other trans creator that I follow. Um, her name is uh, like Rose Montoya. Mm -hmm. And she, she has a pretty big following and she had actually issues with like her content being taken down and removed too. And she she was talking about her theory about that like people are like actively reporting this. Um, oh. So like there's some there's some people that like are going out and to like search for this content just to take it down. To report it and get it taken down. Wow. They must be pretty fucking sad and unhappy. Lead yeah, terrible I mean, lives. These people get so bored, they decide to, you know, storm the Capitol one day, so. <laughs> they, they storm the Capitol of TikTok trans hashtags and they're like, we're gonna fucking take them down. The keyboard warriors of the- <laughs> Exactly, 100%. I believe it's the same people. The Venn diagram for those two groups is just the yes. circle. The Proud Boys who uh, infiltrated the Capitol were also infiltrating the trans uh, hashtags a week before. <laughs> um which that shit is crazy how did you find out when that happened because i feel like i kind of it's hard for me to like put two and two together because you know the attack that happened with 9 11 like like both of us like we were so young like you're 25 and i'm 26 
So like we were super young. Um, and I still remember how I felt when I saw it. Like most people do. And I remember when I was home, I like had a whole thing. And I feel like I had a similar experience because it was a terrorist attack. It was just domestic instead of foreign. Um, what was your experience with that? Because I, I would love to, to kind of talk about like how, how people found out. Yeah, so I was actually in like a, a day-long work meeting and it was, I guess, I don't know, towards the end of the meeting, like one or two o'clock and everyone like whipped out their phones and they're like oh you know these people just took over the capital and everyone was like like kind of like shocked by that but then we quickly yeah. went back to the meeting because that's just i guess how my boss is, is she's like always thinking about work so after the meeting like concluded i like went and looked it up on my laptop and i'm like what the fuck just happened like this is insane yeah I was in disbelief. I didn't think it was actually as bad as it was. Like, I just thought people were protesting and they were like, got a little farther, but I was, it was before I got on and really looked and like saw all of the differences between like how they responded to the BLM protests in the summer versus now. And so I was like, that seems a little interesting. Like, how are they on the property? Like, how are they on the steps? How are they in the balconies? Mm -hmm. Like, okay and then i saw the first picture where you know the um guns were drawn in there like pointing at the people outside and i was like oh my god what the fuck but then like there were so many things that were di discrepancies people were like stay inside and so everyone was huddled but then some people left the congress like hall and then you have footage of people literally being inside in like nancy pelosi's office and like all these different offices and like it it seemed like it wasn't real like when i watched it i was like how is the, the this ha like this seems scripted like this seems <laughs> like an episode of the office it seemed like, uh almost to be like uh like a like a bad dream or something you know if you asked me like even like i like so i obviously like I vote pretty liberally and stuff because I care about my rights and all that but yeah. you know shame even, on you for caring about your rights I know it's a it's a lot so selfish so, but so fucking we're, we're very <laughs> selfish to care about our rights <laughs> anyways sorry I uh you know so like I have like a pretty negative view of like Trump and his supporters and you could have told me I guess like if you if you said hey do you think that the Trump supporters are gonna like literally test, like hostily take over the the Capitol building I'd be like no like that's gotta be insane like they're not even they're not crazy enough to do stuff something like that yeah I it it it, it took me a little bit to realize like how it happened you know because i think when the election we realized president-elect like you know president-elect joe biden was going to be president i think people forgot they were like oh it's over you know it's over he's going to be out of office it's so close we're like two weeks away and so i think it was in disbelief that something could happen like that because the president's in charge of the military the president <laughs> is in charge of all of that so to me, I was like, oh, it makes sense why to me it felt scripted and it felt like it was a dream. It's because it was fucking, it was catapulted by our president. Our president was <laughs> the one who did an attack on his own fucking place. Yeah, I feel like he, the whole time he was like sitting back like in his recliner or whatever he's got and then just like enjoying the hell out of watching it on Fox News. Like I'm pretty, I'm confident that's not what he was doing. And then he was like, oh, you guys can go home now. You guys can go just, home. I love you guys. You're special. Yeah. Like the shit that he was saying was like, I remember like I was just watching it live when he was saying that, like he wasn't like enraged. He, it was almost like the, you know, when you have an admirer and like, like the, the boy is like poking, you know, at like his crush and the crush is like, stop. But like, <laughs> <laughs> like get out of here like hmm. like that's how i felt like he's a fucking narcissist 
and he's getting yeah. off on inciting a riot. Mm -hmm. Basically, yeah, I felt like his response was like the equivalent of being like, like go home, knock it off. Thank you. Go home. Like, but thanks for what you did. That was pretty cool. <laughs> but so yeah. we'll go home. So he's like, I'm pretty impressed. But like, it's like the dad that's trying to be cool. He's like, I know what you did was wrong, but like, hey. I'm the cool one though. That was really cool. Yes, he's like <laughs> he just wants attention. It's ridiculous, and it, and it, it's all gonna be over in two weeks. You know what I mean? Like he won't mm -hmm. have that. But like it, it just yeah. I mean, and I think it's gonna be great for moving forward because I think it's gonna bring a lot of realization to Trump supporters, to Republicans in general, who maybe aren't Trump supporters. Just. And I think it's going to bring to light white supremacy does exist. This is a clear indication. You cannot look away from something like this, mm -hmm. you know, just like I feel like the BLM movement gained so much traction. It's been around for, you know, like really strong BLM has been around for like years in the last decade, at least. Um, I don't know the full history on it, so don't, I'm unqualified, but um, it gained so much traction because of the atro atrocities that happened. And now, mm -hmm. I mean, I think I'm like America is like now starting to wake up and realize like, oh, what supremacy is this? And oh, like we have so many privileges and holy shit, like, you know, like if I, if I had voted for Trump in this last election, I would be appalled at myself, mm -hmm. you know, I'd, I, to align myself with something like that. Just the, just the <clears throat> sheer like sourness it should leave uh, in their mouths that like, we have to be worried about like the certification of electoral college votes when before I bet you like 90% of the people didn't even know that was a step in the process. Yeah. It's like insane. Yeah. It, it'll go down. It'll be like one of those things that will be in the history book right next to nine 11. It'll be like the two, the two terrorist attacks, one foreign and one domestic, where were mm -hmm. you when it happened? And and all of that. And this was the terrorist attack that the Gen Z's will now remember, you know, because it, mm -hmm. it's the whole moniker of like, oh, you're a millennial if you remember 9 11. Um, and, you know, it might be that with Gen Z, whatever the, the generation like after them. But yeah, certainly I think like with all of this unrest, there will be, there will be like peace, but it's going to take time to rebuild. And hopefully, hopefully, you know, our president and vice president will be able to to do it, but it's hard. It's we're pol more polarized than ever. I don't know how it's gonna get back to normal. Well, if there ever was a normal. Yeah, thankfully we got we got the Senate though, which is, uh, you know, give some hope towards things. I guess. True. I forgot about what we got. We got the Senate. Ah. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I'm interested to see the changes in the next four years and what that'll look like and specifically for civil rights and anything social. Um, we'll see what happens. But awesome. Um, well, um, we can go to part of the podcast where we um, are question for the queer segment where we answer your questions on life, love, and happiness that you probably, uh, we probably have no business trying to answer. Um, you ready for a question, Samantha? Absolutely, let's do it. Cool. Um, so this question comes from Milo. Um, they are 26 and they write, how do you deal with having to come out twice? I am non-binary and at first I came out as a lesbian, but now I had to come out again as non-binary and have changed my pronouns. Um, any tips or help um, from you and the guests that you have on would be great. Thank you so much. Hmm. That's a bit of a tough one, you know, because I, you know, I came out, I guess, in the, in the opposite, I came out as trans first. And then with that came the label of lesbian because like my attraction to women didn't disappear overnight. And so, you know, I think uh, in my you know experience, I didn't necessarily get to choose when I came out. And that's like a long story involving like really dramatic and catastrophic events, but Essentially, I think what my mindset of when I when I came out publicly to like my friends and not those around me was, 
uh, kind of to just to uh, to light the fuse and walk away. And whatever happened happened because, you know, I was at a point where like I knew I needed to to do this for myself. I needed to transition and like be honest with what I was feeling inside. Otherwise, like I knew I would wouldn't have a chance of achieving happiness. And I really kind of approached this mindset of it doesn't matter what people think or what people are going to say. Like you have to have your best interest in mind and be like your biggest support and anything else that comes with it. You know, you take the good and you leave the bad. That sounds, that's great advice. That's awesome. Um, Milo, I, uh, my thoughts go out to you. You know, I understand how hard it is to come out once coming out twice, you know, I can't speak on it. I, I haven't had to come out um, twice. I don't think that I will. I mean, who knows? I'm not going to box myself in to anything, but I would say, you know, take the experience that you, that you had done coming out first um, with your sexual orientation and, and use it to kind of snowball, you know, like all the experiences, all the lessons that you learned the first time, the momentum that you gain to be your authentic self and to build that better version of yourself, you're now going to be more capable to then become more of yourself and let people know that, you know, in a second wave. Um, you know, I, I'm trying to think of like, if I had, if I, you know, realized if I was non-binary, I don't think I am, but if I ever thought so, or I wanted to change my gender representation, I think I would use that as momentum and confidence to be like, hey, like, this is who I am. I, I was confident about the first time I am the second time, like, you know, um, and that's kind of the advice that I would give to myself if I were gearing up to do that. Um, but yeah, I would just use the momentum and all of the, the lessons that you learned the first time around. I think it's important to, I guess, to keep in mind just the fact that, you know, no one stays in their, like, the constant state, you know, for the rest of their lives. Like people are constantly evolving and changing and coming to new like realizations. Like that's really like a huge part of the human experience. And so, uh, the, just the fact that like you are, growing and like learning more about yourself is like such a like a monumental thing in itself yeah that is such a good point it's like the age-old thing of like you know you you dip your foot in the lake and then you you know you come back two hours later is it the same lake is it you know it's different water it's different water it's not the same exact you know is it's the same but it's different right <laughs> so like we are we're in perpetual change and that's what makes the human experience so great. It's what makes our individual and nuanced experiences so rich and fulfilling is, is that. And so to be stagnant is, is to not really live. And so I would pick being in a constant change and I would pick coming out twice versus not coming out at all, you know? And I think, you, you know, you'd be surprised at, you know, you know, uh, the the support and reactions you'll get from from those who've, especially those who've uh, stuck around through your first coming out, like I can prove themselves to be like good allies and a good support system. You know, I think they they're likely much more open to to be by your side regardless of what you come out as. True. Exactly. Yeah. You learn who, who's on your side the first time around. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make the same mistake twice. <laughs> oh my gosh. That is so funny. Um, that's awesome. Well, awesome. Well, we will, uh, what was I going to say? I lost my train of thought. Oh, um, Sam, do you want to answer some questions really, really fast? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, so a segment where we, we give some rapid fire questions like this or that questions, yes or no questions. Um, gotcha. so I'll say them and you have to answer them really quick. Okay. I'll do my best. Okay, cool. All right. Ready? Uh, King princess or Kehlani? Uh, Kehlani. Ooh, Haley Kyoko or girl in red? 
Girl in Red for sure. Hey, okay. Janelle Monet or Tegan and Sarah? I don't know who the first one is. So I guess Tegan and Sarah. Okay. <laughs> um, Janelle Monet was the one who like her and her girlfriend had a video and like her girlfriend dressed up as like a big like pussy. I don't, no idea what okay. you're talking about. <laughs> you need to go watch it because it's really good. Um, but it's it, it's like a notorious thing. Um, okay, jean jackets or flannels? Ooh, fuck. Jean jackets. Okay. Beanies or snapbacks? Beanies. <laughs> Coffee or tea? Tea. I love tea. Um, most people say coffee, so I love when people say tea. I'm like, yeah. I don't drink coffee. I try not to get stuck with that. I get it's too much caffeine. I'm already hyped up. <laughs> um, cake or cookies? Cake. Nice. Uh, giving presents or getting presents? Uh, getting. Nice. Um, are you the gay that squishes the bugs? No, absolutely not. <laughs> Uh, you I tell your, this, your like, girlfriend to do it you're like you go do it yeah my girlfriend's definitely like the more femme one the one that's like she's shorter than me she's like very much more like pretty than me but I'm like if I see a spider like I'm useless and she has to deal with it <laughs> I totally understand I don't I don't do it either and if I do I try not to like hurt it I try to like get the spiders out if I can um it doesn't always work that way but we try <laughs> it's a thought that counts yes um well awesome well thank you so much sam for being on this podcast if you want to check out more about sam you can find her um at samantha.lutz and as always you can find me on all platforms at brie logan if you enjoyed this episode please subscribe where you are listening check out our full video episodes um on youtube the link is below uh that's it for this episode my queers be you, be queer, stay safe, and we will see you on the next episode. Bye. Thank you so much. Yeah.